Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Devashis Banerji, to accept our invitation again to, to this uh, channel. Uh, well, today we continue with, with the questions that we have the last time. In your experience, how art helps humanity to transform emotions? Yeah, thank you, Claudia. So um, we were talking about Indian art, but this question, of course, is a broad question about all art. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we can start with talking about Indian art uh, and then talk about art in general um, mm -hmm. or the other way around. Um, I think emotions are um, really what art is about. Uh, so, of course, when we are talking about visual art, we are talking about the visual representation of um, of reality in some way or form, um, mm -hmm. or not even representation, the visual embodiment, we may say, of uh, states of experience and consciousness. So humanities in general, all creative activity, whether we talk about literature, theater, dance, art, emotions are central to them. And so, for example, if there is something I want to get across to you, I can either do it by logic, by actually talking to you, or I can make you feel it. And that's the place of the arts, where um, a, a message is something that you are made to experience through your emotions mm -hmm. instead of through your mind, primarily. It's the emotions that take the first place, and then the mind follows in that sense. So it's a uh, primary vehicle for transformation is the emotions. So, for example, I mean, if you're talking about figurative art, art which is representational, then we depict various scenes that move us. It will make us identify with the characters that are being depicted in the way in which we um, are made to see it. And Based on that, we feel the emotions that will actually speak to us about taking a certain attitude. See? So if we talk about Indian art, we find that the relationship between art, yoga, and emotions goes back to about maybe the second century BC or earlier. Uh, in the field of theater and dance. So the very famous text called Bharata's Natya Shastra is talking about the expression of emotions. And there they are dividing, they have a certain set of emotions that are being depicted. Okay, And these emotions, um, they will include uh, you know the emotion of 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 love or eroticism called shringara um of of comedy comic um, or amusing mm -hmm. uh, emotions that's called hasyam um emotions of um, great i wouldn't say anger but i think uh you know uh, i mean fury of a certain kind which is called mm -hmm. rautra um, emotions of compassion, karuna, um, emotions uh, that evoke our disgust, right? Called okay. vibhatsa, right? And then emotions that are really very fearful, uh, terrible, fear, bhayanaka, um, emotions of heroism, right? The heroic feeling that's called vira and emotions of wonder and amazement 
called adbhuta so we we find these are eight they classify them into eight kinds of emotions and the ninth emotion which comes a little later is shanta or or peace mm-hmm. and uh, we talked about this later because this is originally created for the theater and the dance mm-hmm. but this also appears in art because you find that in the temples you find uh, scenes of the divine right um and what is it that they're doing and often times it's related to activities in their stories mm-hmm. these activities of their stories include these emotions so in a way what we are seeing there is these emotions which are human are being given a divine representation they're big or oh, how would the divine express this emotion in other words mm-hmm. emotions are not just uh, are or the state of divinity is not devoid of emotions it can have all these emotions but the character is different and this ninth emotion called shanta is what is related to raising the quality of the devotion of, of the emotion so that there is a kind of a peace in the middle of the intense emotion can we raise the emotion to a state of um, of of rest of peace so mm-hmm. that we still f- feel intense emotion but it is held in a universal kind of consciousness see so this is a transformation of hum- emotion you may say so what happens is in the temple context uh you know all these that are talked about are are depicted you know including the uh, fearful the you know angry or the uh, even the disgusting okay <laughs> uh, so you find for example to give you an example of the the use of the disgusting right mm-hmm. uh, you find scenes in which uh, a deity or a god is killing a demon right and and that can either be a act of uh, rodra in other words of of a uh, very intense um y- y- you know destructive mm-hmm. energy right intense destructive energy um it can actually evoke fear that's why you have some of the gods or even the agents of the gods we talked about kali last time right that can evoke yes. fear mm-hmm. um or you have um in tibetan buddhism you have very fierce forms of deities right so these kind of deities that we find that um show that scene uh depict that scene uh of you know some god who is destroying a demon and maybe disemboweling them in other words tearing them apart right i mean you have one case where uh one aspect of vishnu called narasimha has a demon on his knee and is really tearing him apart you can see the insides coming out okay, okay? so in a way it's quite disgusting right mm-hmm. but in context if you think of it as a you know way by which energies of the earth are violently responding to other destructive energies um then you feel another kind of emotion you see uh so that's a transformed emotion see okay. so this is the way in which some of these emotions are transformed and in a temple what would happen is that you would confront these scenes and think about them and in thinking about them you'd put yourself into that context and you would experience that emotion in the context in which it is being presented and that would cause a certain kind of uh, elevation okay or yeah and transform your emotions in that sense now this is uh, in the indian context right and you find mm-hmm. different 
you know, there's a hierarchy to these emotions as well, depending on the kind of uh, approach to spirituality that you may have, right? If you have, say, for example, for the Buddhists, the highest emotion is compassion. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So they, you know, look at karuna, right? You, you, they look at uh, the emotion of compassion as the most high emotion, right? On the other hand, to we were talking about uh, Radha and Krishna, right? So mm -hmm. to those spiritual schools that look at uh, love as the highest form of uh, spiritual expression, uh, Shringara or the erotic and um, you know, affective emotion, uh, right. emotion of love is considered the highest. Um, to some, Adbhuta is considered the highest. Adbhuta means wonder. wonder. You know, okay. so again, so you notice that the sublime, right, the notion of the sublime, right, the sublime puts us in, you know, face to face with infinity. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and when we are confronted it, with it, we can either feel fear, or we can feel wonder. <laughs> yes, they say awe, right? The ex the the emotion of awe, right? Uh, which is really a kind of wonder at uh, something that exceeds us. Okay, so the the something that has no horizons that exceeds our horizon. See. So it's in these ways that uh, various emotions are experienced as uh, the highest according to the form of spirituality that you are following. There's not necessarily mm -hmm. one form, right? So okay. each one will look at it differently. Um, in general, if you take it out outside uh, India and uh, these these traditional schools of emotion, uh, still the same principle holds that mm -hmm. uh, art depicts uh, various scenes in which you identify with what is going on and experience emotion. Now, if we come to our times, which is modern times, exactly. <laughs> um, there is a, a kind of a, in the importance of abstraction. Mm -hmm. And you may say, uh, does abstraction have a similar effect? Because it's not so easy to identify um, as with figurative scenes. Mm -hmm. But I believe there too, there is emotion because, you, you know, I mean, we are just abstract art aspires to the condition of music in a way, you know, just like uh, music is in, in a sense abstract. It is dealing with notes, uh, it's dealing with uh, intensities and the the relationship between uh, different uh, forms mm -hmm. of sound. So similarly, that is translated, you may say, into another kind of language when we are talking about abstract art. Then we see color, intensity of color or of 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 line of uh, you know of direction composition uh, of texture uh, mm -hmm. these become the vocabulary of abstract art through which we can see a relationship uh, between uh, elements that awake movements of consciousness in us we relate to it in terms of consciousness so uh, from that point of view, sometimes there is an intentional um, kind of emotional, uh, you know, relationship that is depicted even in abstract art. So th these are the ways I think uh, you can think about the transformation of emotions uh, through art. Thank you, Devashish. <laughs>